If you are in business, if you have a side hustle, if you're trying to grow your business and you don't understand how to structure your business, you are going to lose a lot of money. Today's department is the tax department. As soon as you go out and start to spend money on a business or an idea to generate income, you gotta strategically think about how to save our money here. And that happens while you're making the money, not after the fact. The biggest question that we get in, in tax is like, what can I write off? If you're a small business owner, anything can be deductible. Can people write off their car payment, a portion of their car insurance? You're entitled to that deduction because you had to spend money on it. Which they don't freaking teach you. This episode, I believe, is worth $23,000 minimum. This information we're gonna share is what cost me to figure it out. So, I've been an entrepreneur since 2016 and in 20. 19, that was the first year I did my first six figures. I made a little over $100,000. Did my taxes in 2020. We all know what happened in 2020. And my tax bill was $23,000. That was all the money I had to my name. So the year I made the most money in my life, I had to reset and almost go broke. I didn't pay the tax bill right away. And that was because crazy stuff went down. But this was an alarming indicator that I needed to learn tax strategies for my business because I know that there's a way, you know, like you should keep more of the money you make, like it's possible. So I'm excited to have my personal CPA tax strategist, Matt Bontrager on the show. Welcome to the department. Thank you, man. I'm pumped. I'm pumped to be here. How, how often do you hear, because that's the story of most entrepreneurs who start out, they're, they're, they're more concerned about making the money or, you know, working on their product. But then that, that the whole concept of like every dollar you make is not yours. <laughs> it's crazy. I think it's important when you're first a business owner to focus on making money, obviously, yeah. but people wait too late to start thinking about, well, hey, okay, I've made all this money. Now, what am I going to have to stroke to the tax man? Mm -hmm. So, and you know, there at some point there is a, ah, oh, you're too late. So um, I don't think it's a bad thing to focus on really earning and get into the bag quick, but uh, as far as your taxes, once you start seeing the money come in, you definitely need to start asking questions on how to like strategically not pay as much as you can in tax. Yeah. And I love that you said asking questions because it's like, it's about the questions you ask, not, and it's not like, how can I, it's not, can I write this off? It's how can I write this off? You know, all this stuff. But anyway, I also have Art uh, on because yes, sir. Art's, you know, building out his little agency, big agency. I don't want to, mm -hmm. I'm not going to despise the day of small <laughs> beginning. But no, Art's, you know, setting up his uh, structure and doing it the right way. I wish I had what I knew. The, so yeah. I'm, I'm saying this episode, I believe, is worth $23,000 minimum because this information we're going to share is what cost me to figure it out. So uh, you you own True Books, mm -hmm. which is a, and this is another thing, another, uh, uh, you're teaching me terminologies. There's a difference between having a CPA. Totally. And difference between having somebody who's a tax strategist. Totally. Can you break down the difference between the two? So CPA or a tax man, tax woman, whoever is, filing your taxes was simply doing the report card. So, hey, send me your W-2s, send me your 1099s. We'll put together the tax return for you and send it off. Really no difference than what TurboTax and H&R Block is doing. Having a tax advisor or strategist is someone that's saying, okay, give me everything about you, where you make your money, how you make your money, how many different revenue streams you have, what your involvement in the business is, do you have kids, do you have a family, everything about your life so that then we can take a look from your tax perspective and say, hey, going forward, if you make these couple tweaks and do this and spend your time here or check this box here, you can save substantially on your taxes. So it's somebody that's proactively looking at your situation and helping you mitigate and save and dodge the tax bill versus okay. the old traditional model was you just drop your documents off, you sit in an office for 20 minutes with like an 80 year old gray haired man and he'll prepare your tax return in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's still needed, we do that too, but the, the newer age of this is, all right, we gotta strategically think about how to save our money here, and that happens while you're making the money, not after the fact. That's good. Yeah. So I wanna kinda walk through the journey of somebody starting a side hustle, Yeah. you know, let's just say I started this, I started doing something and it. I, I was able to charge money for it, mm -hmm. and in the first year I, I made $30,000 extra. Yep. What would you say to that person like at that part in their in their journey? They don't know they're gonna have a quote unquote business yet. This is like a side hustle, but they're mm -hmm. making a little bit of extra money on the side. The first place that that person naturally 
because I'm sure that there's someone here watching that too, will go wrong is they'll have made out of that 30 in the year when they start, let's say they get to the 20 mark, they've already made 20 of it and they haven't even tracked how much they've made or mm -hmm. how much they've spent. Yeah. And then they get to the 30, they've made 30 grand. It's like middle of December, you're ready to close the year out. And they're like, oh my gosh, like, I don't even know really what I made and what I have left. And then, so think about that. You come to the year end, you have two weeks, you've lost now. Once that timer hits at the end of the year, mm. you've lost some ability to tax plan because the year's over. You have some ability after the fact, but not nearly as much. And the biggest part that that person is going to this uphill battle that they will face is now I have to go back and see everything that I spent my money on because it's, well, you don't want to pay taxes on 30. You definitely spent money to earn the 30. Yeah. You paid a contractor, you bought a cell, you have a cell phone, you already had a car. These things right, are deductible yeah. that you already owned. You probably bought a computer, you used a camera to film content, you paid to go to a seminar to learn something. And so now it's, what if I would have got that 30 grand down to 18? And I would have only paid tax on 18. So the number one place, I could talk high level tax strategy all day, I like to, but is bookkeeping where people go wrong. Mm. Just, you're gonna go out and start earning money, just keep track of it. And that will set you up for such big success. And it's so under, it's the most slept on tax strategy. So that, you know, so I thought I was doing that. Mm -hmm. So I would say I was doing that. I was, okay, I get to buy stuff mm -hmm. with my profits, <laughs> yeah. you know? But I was a sole proprietor <clears throat> mm -hmm. and I just had a DBA, which is like doing business as yep. my my little agency. Yep. <laughs> and and then when I did the ta my taxes, it was like, oh, sorry, you weren't incorporated. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can do all those things that you just said, like keep track of everything. And, and it, it doesn't matter unless you, I don't know, formalize it or something. Gotcha. Like, and this is information I know I have to hear 50 times yeah, to, for it to like settle. Have you ever wondered to yourself or asked yourself the question when you watch my content, how the heck does Omar's quality of video look and sound so dang crispy? It's literally the number one question I get asked, whether it's privately in the DMs or people commenting on my videos on Instagram or even on YouTube. The reality is I believe the quality of videos that I've been able to produce has been the recipe to my success online and I want to give you access to my live document where I've listed out everything I use both for the podcasts I create to the YouTube videos I make as well as to what I use for my smartphone to make it look and sound amazing. The reason I put it on a live doc is because I keep this document updated in real time with everything that I'm using. So just head over to the videodep.co forward slash crispy or just click the link down in the show notes. Let's get back to the conversation. Dude, I was watching you talk to Neil and Neil was like, he said it perfectly. This is stuff that I do every day. And this is stuff that I've learned from others where when I sit up and I'll do it now, I'll sit here and talk about taxes and you're like, well, wait, I don't understand what you're saying maybe. And I think that I'm trying to portray it, right? So to that point of is where we, oh, okay, the LLC. So like setting something up at that time is... What was the question? I asked that question because I, I had the good answer. Well, it was like I was a sole proprietor oh, when, I yes. the, when I made that uh, 120K. Yes. So it, right in that instance, when you're operating as a sole proprietor, that's you, your individual self. Yeah. You don't really it's just using it. my bank account, my personal, everything. Exactly. And so what I'm a fan of, as soon as you go out and start to spend money on a business or an idea to generate income, you should set up an LLC. Because say that, just say that again, because that was you just said it quickly, but that's really good. So as, yeah, as soon as you are ready to go out and spend money in pursuit of income, like you're going to start a business. So I'm I'm going to go and buy things with the intention that the things I am buying is going to then yield, a, you know, a return. Exactly. Really you good. you went to a conference, you bought a new piece of equipment like a computer to start. You're going to start a photography business, and you bought a camera. You should get an LLC. Okay. And a lot of people think that the LLC is a tax move when in reality it's not. Mm -hmm. It is really a legal play to help start like, okay, Separate this is my you. business, not me, you know? So you're not a sole proprietor. That's the only difference. You okay. could wake up one morning and be like, right. I'm a business. You're a sole proprietor at that point because so, it's your individual mm -hmm. self. Yes. The questions are already cooking in my brain right now. What, what like, <laughs> one you got? Yeah, no, fine. like, I mean, I heard that you need to be making a certain amount of money to start an LLC for it to Whoa, make sense bro. for you. That kills me to hear. I got like no idea <laughs> bro, where did that I comes tell you that? I might have told you yeah, that. Yeah, you told me that. You okay. said like for it to benefit you having an LLC, you need to be making okay. this much. Okay, see, I know what, see, and this is yeah. where like, 
as a tax person, I got to be able to hear something and know what you mean. I know what you mean, right. but it's not what you think. <laughs> okay, bet. So what you think is you were under the impression that maybe I need to earn a certain amount of money to set up an LLC. Completely not true. Right. If I woke up one morning and was like, I've been thinking about it. I want to be a photographer. I'm going to go to Best Buy today and get a camera. Go buy the camera on a Tuesday. But by Friday, all right, you're ready to do this. Set up an LLC. What you're talking about is a little bit more advanced, which is the S corporation. Yeah. But if we backtrack, yeah, an S corporation is an LLC. So let's start. Like I always tell people, the first thing you will do in starting a business, the simple checklist, is an LLC. And wh where would you go to start an LLC? <clears throat> the state in which you live. So none of this, I live in Nevada, but I want a California or Wyoming or Delaware, none of that. That is much more complex stuff that the newer level business owner doesn't really need to worry about yet. Sure. It's just you're, you're being oversold if that's your, what you're being told you need up front. So an LLC in the state that you live in, the next thing you need to do is an EIN, mm -hmm. an employer identification number. I'm getting my haircut from John the other day, my boy John. And he's like, yeah, I went to this website and I paid 250 bucks. I got my EIN. And I'm like, you got scammed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait a second. You don't pay any money for an EIN. Right. It's free. Oh, but yeah, there's not. when you Google IRS EIN application, there's a million yeah. links up top that are not .govs. Yeah. .gov. You need to find the .gov. <laughs> And it'll ask you a couple questions, what the responsible party is, what the name of the LLC mm -hmm. is, and you get a letter right then and there. Yeah. Because I didn't go the LLC route yet because of that thought that I had that I yeah. need to be, you know, making this much. So I just like strategically um, did the sole proprietor route, like the mm -hmm. best you can. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I went to the IRS website and I applied for an EIN. And they gave it to me in like two minutes. It's very fast. Like, and it's free. It's right then and there. I so can't when imagine. like, oh, I paid for this. I'm like, you don't need to pay $2. for this. 250 for that? Is it because they couple up like getting your business license sometimes? They'll probably, yeah, exactly. They're yeah. just saying that they're a service that's going to help you do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. You just, how long did it take you? Two minutes. Yeah. It takes and you I know, so, so fast. I mean, I'm a sole proprietor and I know I don't need an EIN, but yeah. I needed one to apply for a business <clears throat> bank account. So that's my third step. Let's so go. the first one is LLC. The second one is an EIN. When you walk into a bank and say, hey, I have this business. I'd like to get a business bank account. They're going to ask you, I need your LLC and your EIN. Mm. So that's why that's step three, your business bank account. And then we get into step four, which is tracking your spending. And I don't care how you do this. Download an app, use a spreadsheet, use QuickBooks, something. Because back to that person that started their business and was like, whoa, I made 30 grand on the side. Mm -hmm. If you didn't track anything, you're so far behind because one, I've had people send me a 1099 that they got for, this one was around 15 grand. They were a real estate agent and they didn't even know they could take expenses against it. Wow. So I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, like you're about to pay tax on 15 grand when I'm like, you could knock this 15 grand down to like four yeah. easily. So, but to what you were referring to is, so, hey, I wasn't ready to set up an LLC. Well, right. again, the the readiness benchmark is, are you going to spend money and take this serious? Mm. That's the LLC. That's good. Because, like, dude, I mean, I we're at our church, just a lot of people try new things all the time. Yeah. And I get it. I'm like, I kudos everybody. Usually it's not long enough to see it through. Yeah. <laughs> but new shirt brand, new clothing brand. I got to start this podcast. Yep. Like, you you would say. Are you going to ask me for each one? Yeah, dude, would you just go, just get one. Nope. If you know you're exactly. going to go out there and figure out business. Exactly, yeah. get one. Because that's another thing is you can do, I can run a t-shirt business, a wedding planning business, a photography business, all under one LLC. And mm -hmm. that's not, it's it's really not harming you from, mm -hmm. from that standpoint. If these businesses are, are full-blown businesses and they're making a couple hundred grand each and you have, like, for example, I deal in real estate a lot. If somebody is going to go out and consult people and really they've done enough in their career to help people now, but they were, at, you know, like, let's just say they have rental properties and they flip homes. You maybe want to split the activities because one carries more risk than one another. Yeah. Your t-shirt business is way more risky, does a couple million. Your photography business is smaller. Keep them separate. But when you're starting out and you're just trying to become an entrepreneur, which you're, you're, you're taking your shot at it, just get an LLC because what you're trying to do is limit the like the liability between you and something going wrong. Right. So that somebody doesn't come and grab your house and your personal assets, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you would say there's really two reasons to start an LLC is for protection and then like the uh, separation between you and business. Thousand percent. So one of the things that small business owners forget is there's hobby loss rules. Mm. 
So if the IRS deems you to be a hobby, you are not entitled to take expenses. Mm. So take the example of a photographer that was like, I'm going to become a photographer. And they, they bought the camera. They made five grand their first year. And they had some expenses, but let's say they weren't treating it as a real business. They didn't have a separate bank account and they were commingling funds. Yep. And they didn't keep track of their, you know, that. so this is what the IRS calls it, separate books and records. Like, mm. did you keep track of your income, your expenses separately? And they deem you to be a hobby. What, and let's say you spent three grand on that hobby, that activity that you thought was a business. You ideally would want to show 5,000 of income, 3,000 mm -hmm. of expense. You're going to pay tax on 2,000 bucks. Yep. If they deem you to be a hobby, you don't get to take the three grand and you still owe tax on the five. So it really hurts you. I felt like that's what happened to me. But yeah, I mean, potentially. I, I'm like $23,000 tax bill on 120 grand. What I think yours was, was what you were referring to as the S Corp, which is yeah, if you didn't. didn't have an LLC and you were a sole proprietor, there are strategies to where being an S corporation is basically saying, hey, IRS, I have this LLC. I'd like you to treat it as an S corporation. Mm -hmm. And the best way to explain that is when you're a small business, you're going to file one tax return. It's your individual return. And it just has your business activity on the same return, just on a separate page. Mm -hmm. When you're an S corporation, you now file a separate business tax return just for your business. Well, the IRS goes, because being an S corporation can save you on taxes. And we can get into that if you want, but yeah, is basically saying, if you want to go back and say, hey, I'd like to be treated as an S Corp and you never had an LLC at that time, the right. IRS is like, well, you can't do that. You didn't have an entity set up. So that's where it can really hurt you that if you're coming out of the gate, because the S Corp, if you're going to make 50 grand in business net, not the gross, you should likely be an S Corp. Mm -hmm. And so if you're like, man, my business did way better than I thought. And you end up with 50, 60 grand of net income and you're like, oh, okay, great. I'd like to go back and be treated as an S corporation. If we never had an LLC to treat as an S corporation at the time, you're kind of hosed. Yeah. So that that's likely what happened. Yeah. No, and it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> it's expensive. Ig ignorance is the most expensive oh, cost we'll ever pay in life. Mm -hmm. And this, I think this is why this conversation's so good. Um talking about because most most W2 people. Mm -hmm do have like hobbies that sometimes lead into a little bit of totally so, some money. So like, I and I know there's benefits to being a W-2 employee and then actually having a side, side hustle. hustle. Huge. What What is that? The main reason would be most of the time in your first year of business, you'll lose money on paper. So you'll cash flow and make a couple hundred bucks, but after your expenses, such as your car, your phone and all of that, you'll show a loss. At the end of the day, if I have a $50,000 W-2 and I lost two grand in my business on paper, I get to net those two together and I only pay tax on 48,000. Mm. So it's a way to, what's the benefit? I get to earn money on the side outside of my W-2. It generates me cash flow that I get some weekend spending money, some savings, whatever I want. And I get to write off some of these things in my personal life that I couldn't before. Yep. Because you can't take deductions against your, you can't write off expenses against your W-2. Yeah. So that's where people really get hurt. Yeah. And that's like kind of the, I guess <clears throat> that is the, if I were to put a, I think a, a phrase on it, like what we're talking about, it's building a business around your life. Oh, huge. Allowing the business of what it is you do strategically to let it fund the life you dreamed of or desire um, or the life you currently have. Like most exactly. people don't realize like your current life has benefit and, or you could benefit yourself by making more money and, and you are incentivized to keep living the way you live, I guess you could say, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's been what I've been trying to navigate. Um, cause it, that's why you say you, you need a strategist in that case, cause you're looking at the whole aspect of this person's life. You're the best definition of that. Look at, if you, if you could pan the camera and look at this room, if you were, if you were just a W2 employee and this was a passion project for you, none of, you'd be paying so much in tax because none of this is deductible to you. Yeah. This has been your life for, I don't, uh, for a long time. Yeah. Professionally and probably passionately, yep. you know, before you were making money doing this, you were into this field. Yeah. Now all of this that we're looking at as a CPA, I, look at everything as dollar signs, but I'm like, that's deductible. That's deductible. That's 400 bucks. That's a thousand bucks. So it's like all of this now is deductible because you're in a field that aligns with what you were already, you know, passionate yeah. about and involved in. Yeah. And I mean, and it's cool because it's like, I am incentivized and this is where the way you can like start to see it. Like I am highly incentivized to make my business better. Oh yeah. With, with yeah. The, the investing in my business. 
And bef- again, before you made money doing this, you were like, oh, I want that new camera. Right. Now you're like, I get to write off that new camera. So <laughs> yeah. that decision is so much easier to yeah. do because now you know it's it's going to be one, cheaper than what you projected because before when you would buy cameras, you couldn't write them off. Yeah. Now, when you buy a $3,000 camera, it really cost you 2,500 bucks because you got to save some on your taxes for yeah. it. It was an expense. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Yeah, he just, <laughs> just threw down like five grand. Just now. There you go, because yeah. before you were making any money, like you should have a sweet tax situation your first year because you might have a W-2 if you do. And if you don't, then it's even better because now you're going to show a loss. You're going to cash flow, but you're going to pay nothing in taxes. Yeah. And that's what people okay, so forget. That's, all right, just real quick, that's a question. So, <clears throat> I mean, I've watched like YouTube videos on it because I just, you know, didn't know where to go mm-hmm. and I just went to YouTube, but it's nice that I get to ask you this. Yeah. So I bought gear brand new. Yep. Um, Bought it with my business credit card. Oh, dude, I would <laughs> jump through this and hug you, bro. That's great. <laughs> but, You're having um, in there. I heard somewhere that in the first <laughs> year of buying like gear that you use for your business, you mm-hmm. can either uh, write off the um, depreciation. W- yeah, the depreciation, or you can write off the full amount in the first year that you get it. Yep. Is that true? Like, I can write off the full price of the you know gear I bought. Yes. So let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, what, what you're referring to is depreciation, which mm-hmm. the best way to explain it, I try to keep it real simple is like y- you buy a car. The rule says you got to write that off over five years. Right. It's a $50,000 car. You're going to take 10 a year. Right. There are rules now and we're in the middle of tax legislation being changed. We're waiting. We have probably 60 tax returns that we have not filed because oh, we're wow. waiting to hear what's going to happen. Dang. And one of those that will come back is 100% bonus depreciation. So the best way to explain that is, well, back to that car of where you have to take 10 a year. If I can take 100% up front, I get to, I want to, right? And you'd yeah. rather. So in your case, with equipment, sometimes you don't even have to depreciate it. You can just say, I take it all now as an expense. Yes. So in your case, so though- ex- yeah. expense, deduction, are they two different things? Same thing. Sorry. Uh, so I should yeah. probably stop using them, but they're totally interchangeable. Okay. Expense and deduction, same thing. Because like you, you mentioned, like okay, if I made ten grand this year, <clears throat> I bought five thousand dollars worth of equipment. Yep. I, I can, I could only take thirty percent of that cost from my income, or is it like no, I only made five thousand dollars this year because oh. I bought the five thousand dollars. Exactly. I think he's saying you have a choice, right? Well, what we're getting at is the same thing because sometimes you'll have a choice of how much of that deduction you want to take. So we're getting a little nerdy yeah. here, but let's say so on that example, the deduction or expense. If you make 10,000 bucks okay. and you spent $5,000 on something and you can take all 5,000 as an expense, that obviously means it lowers your taxable income. Yes. So now instead of paying tax on 10, you are only paying tax on the remaining five. Yes, okay. So, but to your question of, well, can I write off the entire 5,000 or do I have to only take maybe a thousand a year? You are likely going to take all 5,000 in that Bet. year. <laughs> Say less. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta let me win that the 100% car one comes back because I know it's at 80. Exactly. So that's what's going on now. So before people are freaking out about this before, because I'm trying to buy the Lambo Urus. You know Urus baby, if that yeah. comes back, Omar is literally going to buy a Urus. It will. It, it, it should. And people are licking their lips at it. So <laughs> it used to be 50% was the bonus. So back to the car, you spend 50 grand, the max you could do, let's say, or just for something at 50 grand, 25 grand, mm-hmm. half. Then Trump came in and changed it to 100. So people were loving that. Why would he do that? Like what would be Beneficial his in- for business owners. Yeah. Because okay. he's a businessman. It, it, incentivizing it, people to go and build the country think about through it. small business. Yeah. If I'm a landlord and I'm a real estate developer, I want to do way more deals now because mm-hmm. I get way bigger benefit. So mm-hmm. it makes me want to go get bank loans to do more deals, to you know furnish more housing. If I'm a business owner, it wants me to buy more expensive equipment to deduct it. So it's a very big incentive incentive Provide to jobs. business owners. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, just rate basically like economic growth and activity. So they bumped it to a hundred and we had, we were riding at a hundred for a few years. It was great. Then the rule was it was going to sunset 20% each year to like 2026. So this year we were supposed to be in a 60% environment. Last year we were in an 80. So 180, 60, but then rules came out now that they're going to get it back to a hundred. And so that's why we're waiting for them to give it the, okay, it's passed the house. It needs to pass the Senate. Then it goes to the president. <laughs> so it's like, but yeah, so people were freaking out. Cause I'm like, well, dude, it used to be 50 relax. Now mm-hmm. you're still getting 60, but back to a hundred. So yeah. 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 I have a, a friend. I mentioned this, uh, on a previous podcast. 
he's he's an old school guy, Ramsey Mott, like Ramsey by the books. Mm. Mm. And you know, I was telling him like, dude, I'm killing it this year, and I'm I'm, I'm a coach, so I it's very high profit what I do. Huge. And you know, he's like, just make sure you you tuck away thirty percent, like just tuck it away. And I and my millennial, you know, uh, lack of uh, delayed gratification. Mm -hmm spirit and like yeah. no rolex <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. like I, maybe or like rental properties yeah, or totally. something like totally i'd rather you know i want to do something but i don't know how to weigh that desire of yep. like just you know bring down your taxable income pay what you have to pay or like no think about zeroing that thing every year yeah exactly that's what it is so i love the debates with ramsey like the people, cause you know, he's so polarizing. People yeah. are like, do not follow this guy. Or people are like, oh yeah, you got to follow everything he says. I think certain people need to follow Ramsey. Right. And most so, people need to, follow. most people yeah. need to follow Ramsey because if you follow what Ramsey is saying, you will not be in a bad spot. But if you're a business owner trying to follow and you're trying to really maximize your situation and leverage debt the right way, mm -hmm. Ramsey is not the guy to listen to. So to your point of you are not the ideal listener for Ramsey. Yeah. When we were all starting out, we were, it was don't get yourself in credit card debt, try and use cash. These are not bad things and bad ideologies to follow because they can get people that don't understand what's going on yeah. in really bad And they're trouble. sure. They're like sure principles. Like, they are. This will work if you do this. Which people need that. Yeah. You said like, again, what like Neil was saying is like, say something in a checklist manner so someone can write it down. Mm. You can write down what Ramsey is saying and it is not bad advice. But if, like you said, you made a couple bucks now and now you're like, okay, how do I strategically spend this money to best benefit my wealth, my taxes? Ramsey's not the guy to listen to because he'll say to bank the money and pay the tax. Yeah. When you talk to, and I just use the other guy, Robert Kiyosaki or some you know savvy investor, they're going to say, hey, go buy a half a million dollar rental property, take out $350,000 in loans you know, mm -hmm. or a mortgage to do it. When, you know, Ramsey's like, no debt, no credit. But it's like, you know, that mortgage now and having that rental property is going to give me monthly cash flow. I'm going to pay no taxes on that money yeah. at all. And I now have an asset that every year will grow 3 5%, 10%. And that way, when I sell it in 20 years, I'm going to cash in three, 400 grand. Yep. Like, and, so, you, and that it doesn't have to, the investing side of things doesn't have to be so connected to the what you're doing in business. Not even if close. If I'm a photographer and I'm making 100 grand. Yeah. Like I can have rental properties 100%. And, and my business could fund that, which is actually, that's, I mean, that's the freaking game. That, that is what my firm, your business, all of us specializes in. Your business is only a means to accelerate your finances so you can make money faster. Exactly. And you have control, freedom and all that stuff, but it doesn't end there. It, it actually begins the journey of now building wealth, which is that, the, that whole side of things, which they don't freaking teach you. And I, it sucks because I'm like, it's costing me money, time, effort, energy, all, all that stuff to to learn it myself. And I know it's going to be so good for Ruby and Russell mm -hmm. because I'm going to have created this thing and I will have paved the way, you know? And that's the part that we all can kind of get mad at is like, oh, I wish I would have known this when I was yeah, 22, right. you know, 20 years old. I like to look at it as every dollar somebody makes is going to go out. So it comes in, it's going to go out in one of two buckets. You're going to either invest it and save it or you're gonna splurge it, which is you need a balance. You're not gonna save every dollar. You're not gonna splurge every, some people do splurge every dollar. Yeah. But just as you said, that investing side, I don't care if it's a shoebox under your bed, that's better than being wasteful. Yep. But yeah, you know, starting to build and save is not a bad idea. It's what people should do. And then you start to get strategic with like, okay, if I invest my money here, it also helps me save on my taxes and grow for the future generation, my kids. Yeah. No, yeah, and I think about, cause the, the evolution of the way I thought of buying things with with the money I've made in business was just buying things with money I yeah, made yeah. in business. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. Buy things and yeah. it's gonna go well for you. And it's like that's that's very low level. The the thing mm -hmm. is like, no, this purchase, me getting a vibe board that I will use on web classes and workshops. And then I can also use it to like vibe out if you wanted to like play movies and stuff. It's cool. Yep. But having this vibe board is gonna make teaching even better. And, and then, you know, I'll be able to have more legitimacy in my workshops. The B-roll is going to look legit and all that stuff. I'm getting a vibe board. This mm -hmm. is going to help my business move forward. It's not just, I'm, I'm not just buying a thing, you know? Yep. So I, I think, I think it really is, is becoming smarter, you know? Um, it, and it, it's unfortunate because so much of it is like, you know, you have a passion and you're realizing, oh, I can make money with my passion and then it's emotional, but this is all logical 
stuff. This is like, this is wisdom. This is, you know, intelligence. You gotta, you gotta be able to be, you know, on guard to know that like, I need to be better at the way I think about my business and yeah, yeah there's and a game strategy. to be played. It's no, it, it is a game. Yeah. You're in it 100%. You're mm -hmm. the best example. Like you're in right. a spot with your business that you're making where you're going to be really strategic with what you're buying. Yeah. You're the camera you bought, you know is going to produce you income. Yep. The mic you bought, the lights you bought, you're but like right now, do you need a, a vibe board? If you had 5 grand, are you going to buy a vibe board? <laughs> you know, he's at a point where he has the space, he already has the equipment that you probably have, so just as you said, but when he was in your shoes, he spent the same five thousand right. dollars the same mm -hmm. way. Because at the five thousand dollars, the ten thousand dollars can strategically be used for people in different scenarios, and it needs to be, you yeah. know. So, but now, as you said, deploying that into because I know it's going to bring me more money. You're strategically yeah. spending. You're not yeah. buying a Hummer on December thirty first to get a tax deduction. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like a Urus is going to move Omar's business forward for sure. It, yeah, that, <laughs> and, and I got to find a way. As weird as that sounds, it would. We know it would. <laughs> oh yeah, one hundred percent. So. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I want to get into like, like asking you, like, how, you know, how can you strategically write off certain things that, you know, we all like and enjoy, but I, let's really quickly talk about the best tax savings. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll help you start, start with the, again, why one of the best ways to save money on your taxes is filing as an S corp. Y yes. I would say that was, I mean, is that the, the best? When you're a small business, totally. Yeah. It's one of the most slept on strategies. And let me think about this like podcast style, the best way to explain it. People here that have, or we all have, we've earned W-2s. When you earn a W-2 income, you pay 7.5% to the government and your employer does as well, mm -hmm. right? So that's 15% of this pesky tax that we call self-employment tax. But when you're a business owner, you are the employee and the employer. So you'll pay seven and a half and seven and a half and 15. Mm. So you pay the entire 15. The S corporation helps us cut that back in half potentially to where you're only going to have to pay a little bit of self-employment tax uh, instead of paying the full amount. Yep. And so that's why as a small business owner, you don't really know these things, if, especially too, if you don't have an LLC, you don't even have the ability to be taxed as an S corp. So again, for the listeners, like I try to drop these like, well, hey, watch for this. If you are a business owner and you are netting, not gross, kills me when I see people flaunting the gross. Net is what you care about tax-wise. Mm -hmm. If you're netting 50 grand or even thinking that you're going to approach 50 grand, you need to have the conversation with someone that does taxes. Hey, I think I should be an S-Corp because my business is going to net, you know, around this amount. Mm -hmm. And that, that really, that's the conversation that you have. That's good but huge savings. And it's one of the most slept on strategies. Yeah. It's so confusing why the IRS would do that. Like, why is it an option? Why wouldn't everyone just be filing as an escort? Oh, dude. Like, well, if you're the IRS, you know, like the, the ignorance is great for them. Right. Right. Cause now somebody stroked 20 grand when they could have only stroked 12. So, yep. um, you know, it's not necessarily in their best interest to share that, but I also see where let's say, let's say you, for example, next year, again, like when you're in these kind of circles, you're going to make 50 grand next year. You probably already know that. But let's yeah. say you started this year and you won't because of the timing and whatever reason. Right. It does not, it's not beneficial to be an S Corp. Yeah. You know, you'll pay a little bit more money because why? Well, now you have a separate tax return. Now you have two tax returns to pay for. You also have to run payroll. That mm -hmm. costs money too. So there's more administrative cost to doing it. But that 50 grand, if you're going to make 50 grand, it makes sense. Yeah, it's so, good. Oh, it's another like just slept on tax saving huge. strategy. I saw a uh, so real estate broker up in like Northern California sent me his tax return. $1.3 million that he was making still net was still not an S corp. Wow. So it just shows you like the potential savings and then like just the other strategies available to them that you're, you're operating on a, so what we call schedule C that's your, that's like, I like lemonade stand style. Like you're a new business, you're yeah. new. So that's what you'll, that's what everybody will file when they first start. Yep. But again, like you said it, you don't know what you don't know. And in this space, in all of life that hurts you potentially, but in tax, like it really digs at your pocket. It's one you, of the top, I mean, uh, like somebody broke it down, like for every dollar, the, for the dollar to even get to us, it got taxed. Oh, and then yeah. when we spend it, it gets taxed. And then when we die, it gets taxed. It's taxed. Yeah, it's taxed. It's taxed. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what's so, another like uh, slept on tax saving strategy? We had just started talking about it before. The short term rental play yeah. okay. is massive. And the easiest way to explain this is 
Let's say that, so I have a slide deck where I have this example. Let's say you make a $90,000 W-2. Okay. You could buy a half a million dollar rental property and put some money down on that, you know? I don't care if it's an FHA loan where yeah. you put like three and a half percent down. And on a $90,000 salary, you'll pay about 20,000 in taxes, okay? Yep. If you utilize this short-term rental strategy and buy this property and for, let's, let's say half let's a million, just emphasize it must be a short-term rental. Must be a short-term rental for this strategy. And the difference between short-term and long-term is you've rented it on average, your your average stay is less than 7 days. Okay. So you could buy a half a million dollar rental property and the math could shake out to where you'd only owe 4000 in taxes. Mm. So just by buying, you bought a ta you bought a property, which sure, you had to put money down to buy it. Yeah. But then again, though, that's, I would say that's a Better good investment. You, can, you took control of that money rather than exactly. rel relinquish Let it go. control. Exactly. And you saved 15000 in taxes, potentially. Mm. And then well, you ask, well, what if I bought two? Then you'd pay zero in taxes, potentially. So real estate, I always tell people with taxes... You're going to save money through one, investing in your business, buying lights, cameras, equipment, cars. You're going to bring down your taxable income yep. and you'll save money that way. Then you have the retirement route. I'm going to put away money for future me and I basically get a deduction for it now because the government's like, all right, freebie, you put it away. We're not going to tax you now. The third way is real estate, the, the, the which you see just like the ultra wealthy. That's yeah. The most tax advantage you can get is through real estate, which for me, I'm a real estate investor. That's how I'd like to earn my wealth in my later years. It don't, it makes sense because yeah. I'm doing it for a wealth strategy and I'm doing it for a tax strategy too. Yeah. And I and I think because, you know, when you're a W-2 at a big company or corporation, they take care of a lot of things like, you know, insurance and retirement and stuff like that. And I, I feel like as an entrepreneur, I'm creating my own retirement. Mm -hmm. I have to decide what that is. And I yep. do, I do like real estate. You know, I've, I've, I've been in a couple of homes that we've purchased and I've, I've done a house flip and I understand it. So that is my choice of how I'm going to retire and even provide some, you know, you know, leave something behind for our kids. Totally. Um, but I think it really is just, it's crazy because it's so much information, but it's, it's information we must, you know, know. You, you're, you have to figure it out yeah. because if you don't, it's not a bad thing. Because if you are a W-2 employee, let's say for throughout the years of your life, you could earn a great living, but you truly don't have a lot of tax advantage to you. Mm -hmm. And so you still need to learn some of these things, especially sure. as you get older for your wealth. But you see how if you're a business owner and you don't take time to think about your taxes, oh my, you're either going to do really well. And let's say you still stroke a check every year to the IRS but then it'd make you sick when you realize like, oh Every my time. gosh, if I was a little bit more strategic, how much more money I'd have in my pocket right. or how many more rental properties I would own, how much more I would have in my kids' retirement accounts. like, Or even, yeah, and just the feeling of what I felt uh, that that I, I made. Yeah, you more, earned all this I made, money. I made the most money I've ever made in my life in a year's time and it's gone. Yeah, exactly. Because I just didn't no have strategy. the strategy. Yeah, yeah, I had that fire lit under my butt, I think 2022. Okay. When I had to fork over 10 grand in taxes and I was like, this is a lot of money just for me to just give up like that. I think it was half of my savings at that point. And that's what I find interesting. You could have had one 30 minute conversation that right. would have mm. saved you eight. And that to me Dang. is like, what is like, I just need to figure this out. And so you need to seek the information out, yeah. you know, so. seek the information. And I, I would even say pay for it Oh yeah, be yeah. because like, what would that call be worth now? So like if, mm -hmm. if that 30 minute call, it was just 30 minutes on a free app called Zoom, but that call saved you eight grand, how much would you be willing to save eight grand, pay to save eight grand? 1,500, 2,000 mm -hmm. maybe? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Technically, you could argue I'd pay 7,500 <laughs> right. because I'd still pay less than <laughs> right. eight, you know? So but, but yeah, I, but I see what you're saying. And by paying that, you're gonna get access to the information and for it's what? a future years for the future years yeah. and it's a write off <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> so is like, just it pay is. it just yeah. pay just pay to to get better and i think yeah. that's really key something that came to mind as we're talking about w2s and contractors and stuff is as an entrepreneur who is starting to grow and scale mm -hmm. and i you know i'm not the kind of i'm not trying to build an organization i have no <laughs> desire to build an Watch empire out, it could. <laughs> maybe <laughs> it could happen uh, um if yeah i don't know maybe but right now i'm like mm -hmm. i like to keep it lean and, you know, I've heard you talk about having paying contractors versus mm -hmm. having W-2 employees. Yeah. Can you talk about the pros and cons of building your business with contractors versus building your business with W-2s? 
it, if you're a small business owner and you're running lean, which I would recommend you do, sit, pinch the pennies, save the money. You want to pay contractors. Mm -hmm. Back to that W-2 example of that 15%, seven and a half, seven and a half. Mm -hmm. If I hire an employee, I now, and I'm going to pay them, let's say 50 grand a year. Well, I also owe 7% on top of that 50 grand because they're an employee of me. I have to basically contribute to their social security. That's what this is, the 15%. That's good. That's good perspective. So I'm not just paying them 50. No, I'm paying I'm, them 7.5% on top of that. Yeah. So we, if I pay somebody 100 grand, I pay them really 107, 108 grand. So right. Contractors, I don't have to do that. If I pay a contractor 50, I just pay them 50. So there is a savings there of sure. having people be a contractor. But now let's talk about the well, the pro of having an employee. They're as weird as it sounds. They're yours. They're on your team full time. They are dedicated to you. They do not do work elsewhere, ideally. Yep. So, but it costs a little bit more money there. And so let's go, let's jump back to the employee standpoint. We were all employees at one point, and we know you can't take deductions. So when you were probably a W-2 somewhere working in photography and you went out and bought that camera, you couldn't deduct it. Yeah. It was just basically money spent. But now as a business owner, if you're a contractor doing work for other people in media, all of these cameras and these travel, like these trips that you take for travel and the tripods and equipment that you were passionate about are deductible because mm. you're a contractor. Yeah. So there's always trade-offs, but my advice would be is if you're a new business owner, keep them as contractors. Um, and then once you start to, you know, just have more disposable income and make more money, then you start hiring employees. That's good. And I, yeah, and I do think, I mean, obviously there's gray areas but I think about like entry level positions being W two is smart like ass like assistants mm -hmm. because you just need them you need exactly. them around you need them you need their mind their time their availability and I and I'm always like because Art's a contractor I'm like if he got something I'm like okay that's fine mm -hmm. yeah you know? well you kind of have to be yeah right, right. <laughs> but that's where if it was an employee you'd be like well hey we've kind of discussed that we I need you full time here all attention here yeah because that's another thing too by definition you are one or the other yes. Like, irrespective of what I want and what someone wants, if I have to report to somebody on time at a specific time all week, if I use a computer at work and they give me that computer to use and I'm like clocking in and out, I am an employee. Yeah. They can't really call me a contractor. They mm -hmm. could, it would be basically tax evasion to some extent, but <laughs> that's what, and does that happen all the time? All the time. But so by definition, how you treat a contractor or employee will matter. Mm tax wise but when you're starting out you want contractors it's cheaper yeah you run leaner yeah less things to worry about too um let's get into like fun tax saving strategies not just tax saving but like tax deduction stuff mm. you know oh yeah i want I you to think of here. okay there, here's a scenario that actually just literally took place yesterday so um our siblings like my my older sister and younger brother we wanted to take a we're gonna take a family trip mm -hmm. um to puerto vallarta mm -hmm. and at, at the last minute, my brother had to back out because he got a, mm. a, a you know a speaking engagement opportunity mm. in Australia. Too much information. Who cares? Whoa. Pretty cool though. It's like a small trip, but <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> yeah. Okay. And so like we booked everything. Yeah. And like I'm like, dude, you know they they their their cost was about a couple grand, mm -hmm. and I was just like, man, who do we invite? This is like a sibling trip. It's a family thing. Mm -hmm. And like oh, Art's like family, yeah, yeah. you know. And honestly, we're like having dinner yesterday. I'm like, dude, what if you just pulled up? I'll pay for everything. Family shoot. We'll shoot a podcast. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, we'll talk about the business there. Like these are things that I'm learning and and doing these things. Like I'm asking my tech strategist, will this allow me to write off that be trip. deductible? Yes. The rule for writing. Just say yes or no, real quick. Uh, <laughs> or is it not a yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can't. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. But nah, but yeah. here's how you here's how you boom. Okay. Here you we go. land the yes. For travel to be deductible, it's the 5149 rule. So the transportation costs there and back, 51% of the time has to be spent on business. Mm -hmm. So, and what is 51% of the time? Well, if I'm there for four days, I need at least over two days to be business days. What is a business day? Because this is how tax work. It's like, well, one definition, then the other. Mm -hmm. What's a business day? four plus hours of work or mm. some sort of, if you're in real estate and you're scoping properties and meeting with agents, if you're in content and you're shooting content, you guys go do a podcast somewhere, you go chop it up with, you know, each other at a coffee shop and discuss and master plan, you know, what the 2024 year is going to look like. 
all of that counts as business activity, which would then allow you to deduct that. Yeah. It's really good insight. So it's, but if I go on a trip and I'm there Monday to Friday and one day is business, right. I technically cannot deduct the cost there and back. Yeah. Or if I did, I'd have to prorate it. Yeah. Meaning like, yeah, I spent 2000 on my airline tickets and I can only deduct two or 400 bucks, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you want to deduct the whole thing, 5149. That's really good. Yeah. That's the rule there. So chop yep. it up, shoot a podcast, <laughs> talk strategy. Go meet with others, you know, film. I don't know. Dude, I'm thinking about doing a meetup. Exactly. Like, oh, like, dude, I want to test best. the influence. That's like, a big <laughs> thing nowadays, which I find really cool is like mini meetups. Yeah. You know, 15 to 30 people meetups. I and think that's, that's getting, killer. and then you're getting the documentation. Cause I think that's one other key is like document these things exactly. to the best of your ability. You're in the best industry for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here it is live yeah. on screen, bro. Yeah. You know, prior to that, you know, documentation was, hey, here's a, you know, eight by 11 piece of paper. Like, yeah. Here's 4K video. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fire. How do, how do you like, you know, bonuses you know this is my business i understand that there's like people that that give themselves bonuses mm -hmm. or you know I, I mean if you really want what i'm thinking like okay how, how do you make a rolex tax deductible so for something like this most of it like a rolex most of the time it's not going to be 100 tax deductible you know when a Rolex would be a 100% tax deductible is when I sell watches. Okay. And I buy the Rolex for 50, I wear it for a couple weeks and then I sell it for 60. My P&L, my profit and loss is going to say 60 of income, 50 of expense, mm -hmm. I made 10 grand. If I buy a Rolex cuz I'm just, you know, pretty successful, let's say for a year or two in my business and I'm going to use it again within my business, especially content. So I'm filming a lot of content with it. I wear it to meetings and it really is part of my brand. I film videos specifically about it, breaking down why I bought it, how I bought it, all that. And I'm making it a part of my business. Then I'm gonna take part of that Rolex as a deduction. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe it's 20% of the cost, 30% of the cost. If it is something you only wear to business events and do business on and you bought it specifically for the channel and something like that, then maybe I take 70, 80, 90% of that Rolex. Okay. So yeah. you see where I'm going is a yes. lot of people think, well, if I'm gonna use it at all for personal, I can't write it off at all. And it's like, no, not that's not the case. You just sometimes will have to prorate things and only write off a piece of it instead yeah. of the entire thing. Looks like I'm starting to watch channel. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I, I, I think sometimes like I, um, yeah, I understand things where it's like, okay, I mean, I like this, you know, like clothing, you know, I, I, in, in many cases, I understand that if, if ordinary necessary, whatever. I, was gonna say, I got a good story on that. Yeah. Yeah. Go. We got a client who runs a YouTube channel and does outdoor like nature stuff. Their prior CP then and they have a Toyota Tacoma and they bought a roof rack. Okay. And the prior CPA did not allow them to write off the roof rack mm. because they didn't think which I like think from their perspective, you're in your 70s, YouTube was not even a thing when you're they don't understand this yeah, business. I mean, that's the other thing. This is why I freaking love you, dude. <laughs> is because you brought I understand the world is evolving. Exactly. Business is evolving. Money, the way money is made has changed. Totally. And so having a bright mind and somebody who can see it and not only see it and then talk about it is, um, I don't know. Like, I mean, that's why I was like super gravitated toward you because I was like, there has to be a better way, you know? Yeah, there, which <clears throat> there is, because in yeah. that case, the, the the accountant, which again, that's another hard part about this industry. You can go talk to one accountant and then the other and we'll have two different things. And right. It's like, well, wait, who do I trust? The real answer to me is, are they really credentialed? Do they have mm. experience? But two, are they in your industry? Yeah. So this prior accountant did not, he said, yo, you cannot write off this roof rack. And this guy's like, I only bought it for this channel. All of my content, how I make my living right. is by AdSense and basically ad and all, right? Like ad spend and all this. So in that case, he's buying something too that is ordinary for his business mm -hmm. and necessary. If he wants to continue to produce good content, I, he needs to buy these kind of things and talk about them. Yeah. So if you, but then again, he went to one person and they were like, well, I, you know, this isn't something I'm used to. And no, like you can't write off a roof rack. But then it's like, well, if you understood what he was doing in his business and understood that that's how he's earning his income, right. that that kind of uh, expense is deductible, which is why I tell people when they ask, the biggest question that we get in, in tax is like, what can I write off? And it's right. like, my first answer is always this. Are you tracking what you're currently spending your money on? Because mm. remember, that is likely deductible. When right. you started your business, Name three things you spent your money on. Internet, phone, car. There you go. 
Those are deductible. You use those within your business. They're ordinary and necessary. When you're trying to stretch and say, well, what is deductible? Totally fine. But we have to start thinking, Is do you need this? Is it ordinary that somebody else would spend money on this? Right. Yes. Is it necessary for me to spend money on this to make money? Yes. Your vibe board? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's going to produce much better engagement with your audience, with a workshop. So yeah. anything can be like... Anything can be deductible. Yeah. Literally, it's funny. If you read like tax code and tax language, even if you are a drug dealer, you are only entitled to one expense. You know what it is? The cost of the drugs. Mm. You can't write off like payroll and your admins wow. and like any advertising, but you they will. You are entitled to write off the cost of the drugs. You're going to go to jail. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's yeah. like you're entitled to that deduction because you had to spend money on it. Can people write off their car payment, a portion of their car payment, Ooh. a portion of their car insurance? Like, yeah. oh, really? So I can business. even do that? Yeah. Oh, my okay, God. Okay, so let's say you have a lease and your yes. lease is, uh, for ease of numbers, 2000 bucks a month. Yeah. Anybody here listening, if you want to write off something with your vehicle, your accountant's going to ask you two things. They're going to say, what's the total mileage you used on that vehicle in the year? And then they're going to ask what your business mileage was. Right. What this gives me is your business use percentage. Right. So if you drove 10,000 miles and you had 5,000 business miles, 50% business use. If my lease payment is 2,000 bucks a month, I can write off $1,000 of my lease payment. And that brings down taxable income. Exactly. It's an expense to lower the bill. I'm uh, separately tracking my mileage. So like- Dude, you're doing all the- wow, Yeah. So crazy. I read an article so I have quick or something. Books. Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> and it's auto track. So whenever I get in my car and I'm driving, yeah. it's already you know tracking- and I just categorize each trip if it's personal or business. So, I mean, that's like super insightful. Do you use QuickBooks? Yeah. Yeah, I can already tell by the words you're saying, bro. <laughs> that's good. But I, Okay. You're way ahead of this, bro. You should film what yeah. you've been doing. But it sucks because I feel like I was late because 2023, when I have to file for 23. Uh, that's a good example of it's too late. Yeah. Right, like yeah. Well, so hold on, keep were, going. What do you think you're you, too late on? Because I don't. No, you don't sound I just late to anything. because I wasn't strategically set up the year of 2023 oh, you were and a sole proprietor. Yeah, and it's just a yeah. mess. You know, like it would be a nightmare for you, but for 24, you would love me. Like everything's organized, set up and like separate. So the day that here's what's going to make the accountant roll their eyes at you. I do it. It's just like, oh, and it's kind of out of like sadness. Like, oh, I wish you would have known is if when you come to us and you're like, "Hey, I made this money." And I go, "Cool, show me a profit and loss statement." And you're like, Right. I just, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have that. And then you're like, like oh. having to, like, and then there's times where you not make it up, but you're having to come to an average. Of you're going to have to come to an average. You got to just start digging through bank statements <laughs> yeah, and receipts. Great. And so, what I'm saying is, you would roll your eyes at me for sure. <laughs> for that year, though, but yeah, not yeah. now. I just asked you, are you using QuickBooks? And you're like, yeah. So now I know you have your numbers going right. forward. Dude, yeah. I did, I, every time I go to one of these tax talks, I did one two weeks ago at a brokerage out here, 40 agents. This is a high producing brokerage. They're all making at least a quarter million bucks. Mm. Okay. I asked the room every, I don't care if it's, I've, I probably did it think like wherever is I'll ask the room. If you met with me next week, do you, could you pull a profit and loss statement and show me how your business is doing? Zero. No one raised their hand wow. at that event. And most of the time you'll have like in a crowd of people, three, four five people. Cause it's such an afterthought. Yeah. But when you come to a tax account and you're like, Hey, I want to strategize and save some money. The first thing I'm going to ask you is for that. Right. Yeah. Cause we need to know how much you've made. Yeah. You don't even know and if it, what you need to save, if you right. don't know what you've made. And not, isn't it at bare minimum, your business bank account could essentially could be, be that. Cause yes. if your money is going into your bank account and you're charging the card on that bank account, it's literally giving you a profit. What's and loss. There is your net. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. if you're, but that's where how many people, Ideally, that works great. How many people are just using one bank account for their stuff? Oh my goodness. When you first started, you whipped out your personal credit card yep. to buy things yep. for your business. Yep. You didn't go get a business credit card or a business bank account. So that's where I just, I can't, I shout it from the rooftops, mm -hmm. bro. Like yeah. if you're going to spend money on a business and you're ready to take it serious, do those couple steps of getting an LLC and a bank account first and you will hug yourself later. Yeah, it automates. And your pocket will be so much better off. And it's good. It's even like even it 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 puts a physical decision in a moment. Like totally. I, I have a business card, I have a personal card. This is business. Yeah. So rather than like, 
I'll figure it out later. Yeah. <laughs> no, <don't laughs> Which that's what 99.99% of people do. Dude, you're, we're in the one percentile. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, dude, uh, no, literally, I was shocked, bro, when I did that talk there. I'm that's like, you wild. guys are, I wanted to say, you guys are all the, making a quarter million dollars and no one here has their numbers together. No one, no one in the room did. That's crazy. You make a quarter million dollars a year and you don't know how much money you make and spend. Like mm -hmm. that to me is incredible. Dude, that's dope that like, I mean, that would fire me up if I was a profession, if I was an expert in something that literally 100% of the people I needed to help were like yeah, right That's why it makes this business kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Everyone, yeah. it's a never ending journey. Even when you do tap in and you do do the bank account, now it's like, okay, the, the short-term rental like and then now it's like the short-term rental has its own little it's a game it's a game yeah. dude okay quick question yeah. quick so i also have one so regarding my insurance and then my car payment so right now that stuff's being pulled out of personal um still and that's okay and that's fine so i just i'm gonna have to backtrack and what, add all that up at the end of that's the year simple. that's 12 transactions though. and at the end of the year yes. if i was your accountant right. you'd give me your PL and it would say income expenses but then you'd also say hey i got my vehicle stuff and you would just send me basically okay if you were leasing it you'd say here's the total lease payments for the year and then i know the math to do because we already talked about your business use percentage so if you give me twenty thousand of lease payments and i know you're using the car half of the time for business i say hey we got to add this ten thousand dollar expense as well nice. your insurance too I'm pretty sure I'm using my car for more than half of Great. business. Great, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Sure. But, okay, cool. Okay, so, I mean, staying on the car topic, you know, buying a car on your business versus leasing a car on your business, mm -hmm. which the, which, how would I decide? So you get a way large, you don't get a large tax deduction for lease. Okay. So back to that car way back, the 50 grand, you get to write off 10 a year or in, right? Or a 100 percent Or write 100% right then and there. If you lease, let's say to lease that car, I only pay 10 grand in lease payments for the first year. I only get a $5,000 deduction. Let's say if, okay. or if I use it hundred percent of the time, I get a $10,000 deduction. The other thing about cars is we do not care. Taxes do not care how much you put down on the car. We only care about the purchase price. So I could walk out of a dealership, ball out, get a G wagon on a 0% down financing deal. Is that over like five what, tons usually, or six tons? Uh, well, yeah. So, right. So the G wagon's big, the Range Rover, the whole tax strategy is buying a vehicle over 6,000 pounds. A Urus is over 6,000 pounds. Just to say okay, here, Urus is over 6,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I could put no money down on that car and get the entire deduction. So that's mm. where, again, when you start to be strategic, that's not a Ramsey method. Yeah. That's the ugh, Ramsey would drop dead at the yeah, thought of that. Put the but least strategically, I can walk out of that dealership, no money down. I walked out with a car and I get, let's say the G-Wagon was 150 grand. I could write off 150 grand and not spend a dime so until good. my first payment, you right. know, 60 days later, 30 days later. Okay. So, Some hypothetical situation. Yeah. It's it's December. Yep. And I go get the Urus. Yep. And now the, the, the year I bought it, I now have this deduction. Yep. And then in March, I sell it. Okay, we're going to get nerdy here, but people need to know this. Okay. So help me out here. That's a big misconception on like, okay, you bought the Urus. We're going to use easy numbers, 100 grand. Okay. They're really like 340, whatever. You spend 100 grand on a Urus in December. You use it only for business because that's another thing. You're going to use it personally. But let's say in December, you only used it for business. You will, you will write off 100% of that. Boom. No, Let's say no money down. You got a $100,000 tax deduction. Four months later... Somebody's like, hey, I'll buy that Urus from you for 90. Let's say 10 grand less. Okay. Most people think, oh, I lost 10 grand on that. I bought it for 100. I sold it for 90. I lost 10 Gs. The, really, the real way that that shakes out is when you're calculating what your gain is on that, so like 100 minus 90, mm -hmm. you don't run that math. You have to run what your net book value is. Okay. So your net book value is purchase price, minus what you've depreciated okay so your net book value is zero mm. so you bought that car for a hundred you depreciated a hundred yep. your, your net book value is zero dollars you basically used it all up think of it that way okay well when you sell it for 90 my calculation is 90 minus my net book value of zero so my gain is ninety thousand dollars okay so sure you got a deduction for a hundred grand in the prior year mm -hmm. but you now have income of 90. okay dang that's why when that's you, wild yeah, no right. one thinks about that. Yeah. And that's why when you hear Grant Cardone's like, yeah, I bought a jet, wrote that bad boy off, <laughs> sold the jet, got to buy a new jet because I, <laughs> I got to get Rolling. rid of this tax bill from when I sold this Gulfstream. So it's yeah. like, 
Yes, big misconception that Dang, you can crazy. buy it, write it off, depreciate it, sell it, so not in, pay anything. Yeah, so like in my bank account, I took, I lost ten grand. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like exactly. But but in in the tax world, you I profited made, ninety. I, I profited. You profited ninety yeah. for that year. But sure, you got a huge tax deduction the prior year. Yeah, and that's what the government is saying. Like, hey, we just gave you a hundred thousand dollar expense for this. You no longer own it. And now you don't, you just got paid for it. So now you got to recapture. That's what we call depreciation yeah, okay. recapture. That's good. So, but it's like, think about that. Think about that last three minutes of talking we just did. That's so hard to convey over a podcast. And who is going to know that or navigate that on their own? No. Yeah. Which is where like, if you start buying assets like that, like an expensive vehicle within your business, you got to have like a two minute conversation with somebody that knows what they're talking about no, because yeah. you'd be screwed when you sold that in March. Yeah. I wish I had your phone number because when I was trying to get my stuff set up, it was so scattered. Like I was looking on Google. I was on yeah. these websites, on YouTube. It was everywhere. But you could have just told me in a 10 minute conversation and I would have been it's, done. It's weird for me to be in a profession where I feel sometimes like a doctor, like, hey, bro, while well, I got right. you for two minutes, can I ask you? And it's like, yeah, totally. But yeah. like, because I, and luckily I do my pediatrician's taxes. So like, <laughs> when my kids get pink eye, they're getting me eye drops at midnight. Like I'm not yeah. waiting because when you got a tax question, you're going to call me. And yeah. so that's like, it's nice to be able to trade the knowledge, sure. but it's also in an environment where I'm like, dude, this stuff is so simple. But like Neil said, it's not, yeah. it's only simple to me because I do it every day, yep. 10 hours a day. But when you have to randomly Google something, you don't know what to trust. It's like you, I do want to be there and like save somebody be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, no, do it this way. Cause yep. that one sh like little shift can save you so much money or cost you. Yeah. Like you could have hundreds of thousands of dollars come down to a checkbox mm -hmm. and be like, oh, you didn't do that. You lose out on all this potential savings. That's wild. So it's so circumstance. That's what I tell people with tax. You could have somebody that looks the same two people. And if you don't listen to every fact and circumstance with their situation, it, you could blow a whole strategy because it all depends on everybody's specific facts and circumstance, which to end my rant, like I'm, I'm, I get on Instagram and TikTok and talk taxes, all my videos and anybody else's videos should do for you is to get you thinking, ah, I think I could do that. This sounds like me, right. not like, oh, I'm gonna do that. Yep. Because you don't know if you can do that. Right. You got to listen. <laughs> so, and doing that could get you in jail if you don't do it right. So it's like, oh, I think that sounds like me. Let me talk to somebody to see, can I really do that? Mm, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. So how, how would somebody, and I, I mean, you, are you able to help everyone nationwide? Now okay. we've built out for that. If you're a small business owner in real estate or content creation or so just like, a don't go on owner, Google, just go to the description yeah. and, and what is it? What, like, what's that first step with, with your company? With Office books. hours. That was our, we tried to make a solution that would help the masses. Me as a CPA, I you you see it. You are now a, you've done enough in your field that you are a consultant mm -hmm. because your knowledge is there. So having an hour conversation with you is worth a lot. Can you have twenty hour conversations a day? No, but it sucks because people need those conversations. Yeah. So it's like, how do you give that to the masses? We made Office Hours. That's Office dope. Hours is the DIY platform of I have live calls and I'll answer questions for you because at so the good. end of the day you need questions. But it's going to be like, you don't need to sit with somebody on my team for 10 hours a year. You just need a couple of templates to keep you on the right path. Yeah. You need to watch a video that's specific to you that yeah. gives you the answer. So, so, so this office hours is like a, it's kind of like a membership. Exactly. Yeah. It's two grand a year. Two grand a year, which is a write off. Yeah. And too. it's worth, I mean, it would have been worth $23,000 for me in my, yeah. in my case. And then. And then it doesn't mean they have to necessarily file with you. No, they're not it's doing it. It's literally yeah. just access to the information. It's literally coaching and mentorship. Exactly. Dude, this is It's like no you set up as a sole prop. One live call or a video would have been like, oh, wait, no, don't do that. You right. should really do this first because it'll save you this. Dude, so, but that that, that's an irresistible offer. Way the, to go. And that's why I like being in this field because it's like, well, hopefully if you pay me two, I'm going to save you at least two. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm going to potentially save and you. And sometimes like, and, and sometimes the saving, like, I mean, I always want to help people see the ROI beyond finances when you spend yeah. the money because it's like it's the it's the information, the skill, the know how, the that's it. Like, and that what I love about it being office hours is you're now you're getting a you know you're you're a fly on the wall to somebody else's question that you have yet to figure out, and you're gonna remember when it comes your way. Like, oh yeah, I remember. Um, or you've gone through something and like. You know, it just, yeah, it, it's tell a powerful, what I yeah, exactly. It's a powerful room. Hindsight's twenty twenty, and I re I wish, you've always heard that, but now as an adult, you're like, oh man, if I would have had some of the knowledge that I do now, and that's like what you said too, you're learning a skill to 
it's more than just the dollars of ROI. Now you can go out. It's unlimited. It's yeah, infinite. Because yeah, now you can, infinite. for something that you're teaching people, you can produce right. now income. And so it's I'm wild. not just saving income. So Isn't that wild? Like 2,000 bucks for that information and they'll just never teach that information in I find schools. that, yeah, I know. And now with my and own kids, universities. Like, I have a four-year-old and two-year-olds and I'm like, how do I instill some of these money principles to them? Oh my goodness. Because it's like, I didn't have this. Yeah. No, something I thought of yesterday, we went to Town Square just to get like a... Um, like a dessert at the press juicery. They have a little soft serve. Uh, Ruby calls it healthy dessert. Mm, there I you mean, go. I it like is it. though. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, stupid. We go walking around, we walk in a, a store and I just, I spent a hundred bucks and I'm just like, I'm walking out with the, like I did not plan. We went to go get a dessert. Yep. And in my head, I'm like, dang, I want, I want Ruby to know that every time she spends money on like a splurge that she has to match it with investing into something. Very smart. If, if I did that, since 18, like if I bought a pair of Jordans that were 200 bucks, I had to put 200 in my S&P 500 or something like that. Imagine when you were 18, you had 38 grand sitting there. It's like, whoa, that's a, that's not, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And I think that's the key with the parenting and teaching these things is connecting it to uh, a behavior that they're already doing. That's, that's, um, so, I tried to think about it the other day. I want to start teaching my kids to barter. What's that? Like we'll get cards and like trade, like uh, well, you got a cool, like, well, I got a thousand <laughs> Hot Wheels at my house. Okay. <laughs> Like if he thinks one's cool for one night and just start to talk to him like, hey, I'll give you these two for that one. So they can start uh, to yeah. understand like, well, what is that Lightning McQueen? How valuable is that <laughs> for cool. Mater and, you know, Chick? Like, I don't know, maybe like, because I feel like those are the things that now as us as, a, as adults running businesses and networking with people, that's such a real time skill. Yeah. The other one was he's obviously like your kids probably have piggy banks. I've yet to deplete it. And I'm like, the next car he buys, I want to. I want to lay the money out and take half and be like, did, was it worth the car? Mm, so I can feel that. Would you rather walk into your room and shake your piggy bank and have it be heavier? Or do you like the toy you just bought? Dang, so, cause good. I didn't have that kind of no. stuff, dude. Like, I got to it's wild. navigate like, this when I was an adult, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And I have, I do actually have friends where their parents were that their parents oh, were wise imagine. with money. They did set them up. They did um, bless them with a house and you know, yeah, and, and I'm like, it, you were working a little bit harder to create that reality, um, mm -hmm. and and it's an honor too. But it just, it'd be nice if we were the recipient. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I yeah. know, but that's where it. I mean, we're the catalyst to changing that. Yeah. I still laugh too because I was on a panel where somebody was like, and going to college is like nothing, to like make basically. But I was like, raise my hand in the background because I'm like, luckily, I. I because you see, people went to college too and didn't even use what they studied. Right. I'm like, luckily I fell in a field where like I at least used what I was like learning from sure. a book. So that's good. But yeah, man, I wish that they had financial literacy with kids. Yeah. It's like incredible to me that they, they I think to all of us now, it's just like a dead horse that we're being like. Yeah. I mean, we, we? we can go pretty deep and like really, I would say, categorize it as intentional, you know, mm. um, ignorant or like intentional mind. Yeah. Employees, bro. That's what yeah, people need. Facts. Um, I think what's cool that something you highlighted, I think most people can listen to or grab from this is that you can start building a business around something you love. That's what like, you should do. That's what you should do. At, you'll make you the most, like, you'll make the most money right. doing that. Yeah. But like the guy who has a YouTube channel that has an outdoor YouTube channel, he probably mm -hmm. was doing that stuff anyway, turned on the camera and it was like, oh, wow, I can get sponsors. Oh, wow, I can get AdSense. Oh, wow, I can sell digital products. And it's it's so cool because then you could fund your your passion. Mm -hmm. And I think about everyone I follow, not everyone, but like most people I follow on YouTube, like whether it's a sneaker guy, like uh, a watch person, I think about Teddy Baldessori. I think he's like, he just passed a million subscribers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He just opened up his own watch shop in Cleveland, but he started on YouTube and now he has his own spot. And it's like so cool to see how the digital space, using the digital space with your passion is funding now like brick and mortar stuff, which is, it's, it's super cool to see that trajectory, but it just, it, it gives you the permission to go even deeper in your passion, which is what people pay for. Totally. People pay you because you're obsessed with the thing that you love doing. Exactly. Well, yeah. It, and that's where, to my point of you should go after, cause they say chasing your passions. No, but I'm like, yeah. if you go after what you're passionate about, your customers and clients will see that. And whether they see that or not, that's what you know. Mm. Like, I'm not going to come to you to teach me how to cook. Yeah. I'm going to come to you to teach me how to set up a studio and run my content premium. Like, so it's like whatever someone is passionate about, you have the most success. Cause let's be honest too. Like we're all in business to make money. Yeah. I love like that. That's what business is about. And so 
you're, you have your chance at making the most money by teaching what it is that you know, which is what you're passionate about and yeah. what you've already been spending your time in doing. All day. And then like you said, the, the further benefit is now I get to buy things that I was already buying and use them to a tax advantage and mm -hmm. save money on them. And, you know, so That's it, really, it's a game. Yeah, it it is. is a game. You need to game. gamify the entire thing. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing I want to leave with is you, I feel like you've really dived into, in your business, this revelation of customer service and care. Oh, dude, I am. Even to the point that your company sent us a little care package because mm -hmm. we had a new kid in our family. And um, I don't know, like what, what, what egged that on and made you kind of like, okay, this is the way to go? I'm young in business. I'm 31. And I love that now people say like when you're 30, you become like a little bit more confident in what you're doing. I feel like I'm living that transition. And I know now confidently that I know how to win in my business. Mm. And I know a key to winning in my business is keeping clients happy to know that they have a premium service because my favorite aspect about my business is if I treat a client, a customer, a friend the right way and they're happy, they likely won't leave for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Mm. The lifetime value on that is exponential. Right. Meaning I don't have to go out and sell new clients because yeah. I can just keep the ones that I have. And so, and I also, clients will pay more because I'm doing more for them. And so, it, and also I come from this, we both do this environment where there's so many pop-up businesses with the internet now that mm. people don't fulfill. And right. seeing that kills me because then as a money guy, I'm like, I see that some of this money that's being earned from all these places is like straight up theft. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm like, if I want to feel good, my like the best thing you could have is a client saying like, whoa, thank you. Mm. That was so helpful to me. And if you shoot for that expectation, so good. you'll win. That's how you win. Yeah. If you keep clients happy. But if you're selling something and then people aren't happy with it, where's the value? And it's like, well, if you can worry about that, you'll win. It'll sell itself. That's why my sales tactic has always been like, I'm not salesy. I just try to say like, flex the knowledge, show people what you're passionate about, what you know, and it'll come. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Any final words, Art? Dude, I'm proud of you, bro. Seriously. <laughs> the shit that you're dropping is gnarly. That's <laughs> good. I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to like, you know, not make the mistakes that I made 22 and 23. So yeah, it sounds like you got stung a little, everybody does. Everybody gets yeah. stung a little bit, a little but then bit. it's like what you're, the terms you're dropping. I'm like, oh, I know you're tracking this. You're doing this. It's like, bro, that's you. Again, I just sat in a room full of people making a quarter million a piece. I don't know if you're going to make a quarter million, but I'm like, all I think about as a CPA, when somebody makes a quarter million, I'm like, oh, you're kind of smart. Right. Uh, after I talk to you for five minutes, you kind of not <laughs> like, <laughs> cause yeah. it's like, you're not doing things that I'm like, well, imagine if you were doing this the right way. So Dude, yeah, because my, I mean, my mindset right now, tell me if this is like not wise, but for when I file for, you know, the year of 23, I'm just going to bite the bullet and just pay it without. Well, watch out. Yeah. Well, well, no, already that's a no. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that before talking to me or someone. No, don't do that. Well, I mean, I didn't look have at your anything tax set up for five minutes and be able to be like, well, dude, less 90 seconds and be like, well, wait, do this, do this. Yeah. Don't do that yet. But it was a nightmare situation though. Like for you, like if you help me file for. 2023 it's i mean it's a mess it's a complete mess as long as you have a profit and loss together there are still things you can do this year that will help you save on your time yeah but i'm saying 2023 year. i i didn't even have that we'll make it now well you're gonna go back, do the work pause. do the work you're gonna have to make it you yeah, can't file eventually. your i don't know what you're like you have to say i made this much yeah and you're I not gonna file oh right point. Yeah, yeah you're not gonna put so a you random, just gotta scroll yeah. month by month dude it's fine i yeah. have it dude i'll set you up before we hit uh, okay, here. and then I guess maybe you should know this. I I have been filing with TurboTax. Is TurboTax Turbo worth it? I used as a CPA before. But before I did taxes, I used TurboTax. <laughs> uh, TurboTax is great. And yeah. then for those listening too, like TurboTax, H&R Block, they're like, you should use those. Like, look at our fees that we charge at our firm. We have to tell people all the time that I'm just like, hey, this doesn't work for you because I don't want to sell them something they don't need. Yeah. So there is an ideal, like if you make a W-2 and you married, have some children, and no one's like a business owner or you don't own rental properties, dude, your tax return takes five minutes. Mm. And so using TurboTax or H&R Block is great. That's the solution for you. That's why they built yeah. it. I tell people like you need to hire an advisor of some sort when you're self-employed or you own rental properties because your entire tax, the game for you is way bigger. Yeah, You really have no game yeah. as a W-2. Not to like, you just don't, which is, it's a simple situation. 
when you're self-employed and have rentals, it's like you're in this whole new world of like where to go, what to do, how to maximize. Dude, so yeah. good. Dude, this was a master class. If you're still listening or watching this, you're the best. Check out the links in the description. Tap into what Matt's doing and save a lot of money, make a lot of money. Um, dude, I appreciate you. Your friendship Love and you. your professionalism. Love you. My man. Thanks, bro. Love you.